Hey guys, Tyler here, and today we're going to take a look at this KSGER T12 soldering station. Oh, the actual box or actual like station, you know, um, is pretty simple in terms of what is, you know, needed, what is displayed. We have our dial on the top, or not on the top, but on the front. We have our actual heater connector, so this is what actually gets plugged in, or our soldering iron. And then over on the back, we have, you know, obviously our power. Um, connector or a power port as well as our on and off switch and then what else comes with it is we have a K um, soldering end as well as a wait no K right here sorry our D16 which I mainly use uh, just because this has been the most practical for the types of projects that I throw at it and there's also a what is it called a JL02 which I'll, I won't lie to you, I lost. And, uh, you know, I can't really do anything about that. But other than that, this, I just have these two, which, like I said, I don't solder as much anymore. But when I did, these two were more than enough. But how it works, basically, so let's just throw it on real quick. So you just unscrew this right here. So I'll unscrew it pretty easily right there. Let's use our D16 dip. And then we just insert it right there. Screw it on. You know, just tighten that hand fit. Doesn't need to be tight at all. And then with this cable, and by the way, the cable itself is very, very high quality in terms of it's not going to get tangled. There's no way this cable will get tangled. It's very, very fluid, very able to move around easily. So you won't have any issues with that. But obviously, you connect this to the power right here. So we'll find the right one. So let's find it. Orientation. All right, so now it's in, and now you just screw on. And then you hear a little clip at the end, which means it's fully connected. So now that's really all I need. Obviously, I need to connect a power, uh, connect it to the power, which I'll actually do that. Um, I'll do that right now. We have our power right here. Let's go ahead and connect that. Right now I just have it in a holder right now, so let's go ahead and turn this on. And give it one second. And now that display is on and we can see right here just how fast this is heating up. It's already at, right now I have it set to 400 degrees Celsius and now it, in, within, what was that, five seconds? Obviously it just made a little bit or a little beep. I'm not sure if you could have uh, heard that, but it just made a beep when it hits the target temperature. It took five seconds to get to 400 degrees Celsius. I feel like that alone should justify um, the soldering station. And the actual UI is very, very um, easy to uh, display. So if I push this button down, this little dial. So let's start first. If I raise the dial, I can boost it up. I can change the temperatures, all that. But if I actually press it down, I can set my temperature. So if I wanted to go up to 480, I could do that, or if I wanted to go all the way down to a minimum of 150, I could do that as well. But normally 400 was about my set point. And if I hold it down for two seconds, we have our setup menu. So we have a standby, we have a sleep mode, we have boost, cold end, tip, stepping, password, um, screen save, buzzer, voltage, low voltage, power on, desolder, pump set, language, date and time, and BTC ADG, I have no idea what that is. Oh, RTC, um, RTC as well, system info, exit, standby. Like there's plenty of stuff that you can mess around with. Um, for example, like also the fact that there is a tip, so you can click on tip and then there's a bunch of different tips that you can uh, enable for. So for example, right now we are using, uh, what are we using? We're using the D16 tip right now. So in that case, I would go ahead and find in alphabetical order the D16. So right here, it's already set on it just because it was the last thing I used. But other than that, it's all fine. You just go right here to exit and you're back to that home page. And the reason I have this is just because I used to buy broken Xbox controllers and then I would fix them and then sell, resell them back. I needed the soldering kit just because I, you know, I it, got, it would get to the point where I would need to fully take apart 
pieces and desolder pieces, put, uh, solder back on new like analog sticks and all that sort. And this was really uh, my bread and butter. I originally had something like this, which was just a plug straight into the wall. This, this is the only power you get and whatnot. And basically, as you can see, this type of soldering iron, I could barely call a soldering iron. I mean, it came from like a $30 kit that I had bought on Amazon as well. And then it finally got to the point where I'm like, okay, I need something more consistent. I need something more powerful. I need something faster. And this one ended up ticking all my boxes.